God is fond of humanity. Welcome to The Biggest Jesus. I'm glad you're here. I don't care who you are or what you've done. God is fond of you. Whether you're a do-gooder, a do-batter, or a do-doer, God is fond of you. Before we go any further, it's definition time. Fondness, or to be fond of, comes from the Greek phileo. It means responsive affection based on approval and regard in contrast with love, which finds its source in the subject, apart from any worthiness in its object. Now let's contrast fondness with love. Love, from the Greek agape, means a complex emotion arousing appreciation or delight in and desire for the presence of its object, as well as to please and promote its welfare. To be distinguished from affection, fondness, which is aroused by the qualities of its object, while love may go out to the utterly unworthy. Love can go out to something that is totally and utterly unlovable. But fondness goes out to something that has a quality in it that makes you fond of it. So what is it about you that makes God fond of you? The scriptures tell us that God is fond of humanity. And if you're a human, God is fond of you. What is it within humanity that God is fond of? Jesus, his son. That's right, believe it or not, when Jesus entered humanity, that was a game changer for all of humanity. Who would have thunk it? Paul writes to fellow believer Titus in Titus 3, 3 through 7, from the Concordant Literal New Testament, For we also were once foolish, stubborn, deceived, slaves of various desires and gratifications, leading a life in malice and envy, detestable, hating one another, Yet when the kindness and fondness for humanity of our Savior God made its advent, not for works which are wrought in righteousness, which we do, but according to his mercy, he saves us, through the bath of renaissance and renewal of Holy Spirit, which he pours out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified in that one's grace, we may be becoming enjoyers in expectation of the allotment of life, Eonian. Paul is reminding Titus of his background, of Paul's background, and in reality the background of every believer. Every believer came out of a condition of unbelief. And within that unbelief, many of these characteristics were prevalent in our lives. Foolish, stubborn, deceived, slaves of various desires and gratifications, leading a life in malice and envy, detestable, hating one another. It's for these people, me and you and the rest of the world in our unbelief, that the kindness and fondness for humanity of our Savior God made its advent. Not for works which are wrought in righteousness which we do, but according to His mercy, He saves us through the bath of renaissance and renewal of Holy Spirit. The fondness for humanity, the grace and the mercy, all of this appeared, made its advent to humanity, when Jesus made his advent. When he came from the Father, he brought a huge bag of goodies from the Father for humanity. Now God sees humanity through Jesus. As he sees Jesus, he sees humanity. Because Jesus became a part of humanity, and not only a part of humanity, but he became the head of humanity, the new head of humanity, the last Adam. Just as all humanity was included in the first Adam, with death and sin and destruction and everything that came from his sin, all humanity is now included in Jesus and all the blessings that come from him. So as the Father sees his Son, so he sees humanity, because we are all included in him, the head of humanity, the last Adam. When Jesus came to us and for us, he brought so many blessings from our Heavenly Father. Fondness, mercy, Grace, faith, truth, life, immortality, conciliation, kindness, Holy Spirit, salvation, righteousness, justification, Eonian life, peace, etc., etc. Did you notice I left love off of the list and love is not included in the etc., etc.? Love is God's motivation for sending his son. And no, 
We are not worthy of his love, but he loves us anyway. John 3, 16 through 17 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. For thus God loves the world, so that he gives his only begotten Son, that everyone who is believing in him should not be perishing, but may be having life Eonian. For God does not dispatch his Son into the world, that he should be judging the world, but that the world may be saved through him. God sending his Son was because of his love for us. Praise his name. If God would have dispatched Jesus to judge the world, he would have judged every single person. Instead, he dispatched his son to save every single person. The first part of Jesus' mission was a success. He saved the world. You and me and all who come from Adam and including Adam. So we have a double bonus. God loves humanity and has proven it by sending his son. And God is fond of humanity because he sent his son. So that's a double win for humanity. God's love and God's fondness. You and I and the rest of humanity are in good hands. Mark 4, 37 through 41. And there was occurring a great whirlwind, and the billows dashed into the ship, so that the ship was already filling to the brim. And he was in the stern, drowsing on the cushion. And they are rousing him and saying to him, Teacher, carest thou not that we perish? And being roused, he rebukes the wind and said to the sea, Be silent, be still. And the wind flags, and there came a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so timid? How is it that you have no faith? And they were afraid with a great fear and said to one another, Who consequently is this, that even the wind and the sea are obeying him? There was no way in hell or in heaven that that boat was going down with Jesus on board. In the same way, humanity is safe and secure because Jesus is on board in humanity with us. The wind is whipping around us. The billows are dashing into the boat. The world is filled to the brim with evil. And it may seem as if God is not doing anything. It may seem as if God is drowsing. He's not. We are safe and secure in his hands. And someday he will say to this wicked eon, Be silent, be still, and there will come the great calm from God, for he is able. Remember that list of negative traits from Titus that is common in much of humanity? Foolishness, stubbornness, being deceived, slaves of various desires and gratifications, leading lives in malice and envy, detestable and hating one another. Obviously, God is not fond of those traits within us. He is fond of us because he is fond of his son and Jesus is part of humanity. But as we continue to grow in our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with God, and as he continues to pour through us the fruit of the spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As these things become more and more a part of who we are, God's fondness for us personally will grow as we grow in those traits. So God's fondness for us is not static. It's always growing as we continue to grow and become more like Christ. God was fond of Jesus' disciples because of their fondness for Jesus. John 16, 27, Jesus said to his followers, For the Father himself is fond of you, seeing that you are fond of me and have believed that I came out from God. It starts with belief in Christ. And as we believe in him and grow fond of him, God will grow fond of us more and more. Thank you for watching. If this video has helped you, I ask you to hit the like button so that we can get the message of God's true goodness for all of humanity out to a larger audience. And again, I will not tell your pastor. I will not tell your pastor's wife. Please check out this video next.